Coming up right now, a California police department has been asked to please stop using Lego heads to disguise suspects. And now they got to come up with a new idea. Also coming up, men are embracing this fashion trend worn by women for years, but does it have any staying power? Right, a little bit later on, talk about your higher education. Vermont State University announces a class based around the music of Weird Al. Daily Flash starts right now. Get ready for trending news and entertainment. This is Daily Flash with your host, Andrea Jackson and Mitch English. The fun starts right now. This is Daily Flash. Hi everyone, I'm Andrea Jackson. I'm Mitch English, welcoming you to Daily Flash. We have a whole hour packed of goodness for you, so stick around for that. Also, Matt Doolittle joins us here, who uh, is, he's inching closer to his honeymoon. He was married, ah. of course. How's the honeymoon planning going? Planning is know. going good. We're going overseas for, for about a week and a half, and thank God my wife is organized, and she's already got the spreadsheets going <laughs> with what we're wearing, <laughs> where we're wearing it, what okay, the temperatures well, are gonna legit. be like. And because I am as disorganized as I get. I just throw my stuff in a bag and figure out if and I pack go. the right stuff. So she's already laid that out. So, so it's going to be successful. How many t-shirts did you bring, Matt? That's what I, I mean, it's all t-shirts and jerseys. It's all I mean, that's, that's what I wear when I'm not here. So. Now, see, I would think this is the true test of a relationship because Matt Morph, spur of the moment guy, and his wife, very much a planner. I, I think that's what makes uh, a, a lot of times uh, kind of unions like that work so well is that uh, maybe you, uh, I'm assuming, Mitch, Matt, you would like to be a little bit more organized. I'm I would sure, be, right? but but I just, I'm not, my brain doesn't work that way. Mitch, you and I already talked about, we married way smarter oh, people. Oh yeah, way like, out of our It's not even close. But I am the organizer in my uh, relationship with my wife and I like to know what we're doing. And so, but now thanks to the technology, it, but I'm telling yeah. you everything will pop up. Hey, I'm going, you know, I'm getting groceries at this time, whatever, you know, I'm like, you, you don't have to tell me everything you're doing. <laughs> Just like, I want to plan out like when we, you know, have yeah. to make plans for the weekend. Sometimes it's nice to have a little mystery. I think so. I, and I got to admit, I still like writing things down. There, there is something to that. I really, and I always now. like, oftentimes in the office, I'll go to the stuff that I've written down on a bazillion different sheets of paper that I'm trying to find <laughs> and organize. I'm like, I know I wrote it down somewhere. Uh, anyway, well, we've talked a lot about AI on this show. Yum Brands, which I believe owns Pizza Hut yes, and Taco Yum, Bell, Yum. they are going all in on the AI. So they are going to be reconfiguring all of their stores. They're investing billions of dollars into this technology. Um, because they want to see AI take over a lot of the um, hourly jobs that they've got inside their restaurants. And they think it's going to be more efficient. Um, it will help them save money in the long run. And part of it, they said, it was inspired by California raising the minimum wage to $20 an hour. They're saying, we just simply can't afford that. There are dry, there's, a, I think, Checkers. Another one around here. I went by there one time. And it's a recording when you pull up mm -hmm. to the thing. Is that and, so? and everything, it, it's voice activated. So that takes one person off the register. Mm -hmm. But but then, like, if you have, I, I get concerned that, you know, I, I want a special, like, I don't want cheese on it or whatever. Yeah. And I don't feel confident it's on there unless I know a human is on there. But I think what it will do is if it's, if it can pick up if I'm asking questions mm -hmm. that a real person would jump on. But if it takes somebody off the register, you can see that and you're 100% right. First it was the kiosk and now mm -hmm. it's gonna be AI. So keep that in mm -hmm. mind. That's what comes along with higher wages yeah. on those sort of exactly. things. We'll stay in California now where a police a department in that state said it will have to come up with a new way of disguising the faces of suspects in photos. Under a new California law, authorities can no longer show a picture of a suspect involved in a non-violent crime. So this is kind of creative. The Marietta Police Department, they were using different ways to cover the faces of suspects in mugshots. And in recent weeks, they used images of Lego heads to block out the faces of suspects on social media posts. But Lego responded, hey, will you guys stop that? Because these are trademark characters and we don't want to them to think that Blockhead got uh, got arrested. Uh, it, I could kind of see that, but then if they put the smiley face, is Walmart gonna say, hey, we, uh, you know, what about <gasps> the smiley face? Point. The Lego doesn't get a put on PD there. Lego is, uh, edition going out there, you know. Yeah, <laughs> well, that could be the new, yeah, build the new jail. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but I will say, though, that technique really drew a lot of attention to uh -huh. that police department and this new law in California that says they can no longer show the mug shots of nonviolent suspects. Now, that's a challenge for police who are trying to catch, you know, anyone who's involved in a crime, whether it's nonviolent or not. 
not. So they're saying that this is like not after they've been like, hey, we ca captured this guy. Well, it's or like if we're uh, like mm -hmm. Bolo or whatever. Let, let's say someone's robbed a store and mm. they've you know done so overnight, and they, it's technically in per California's law considered a nonviolent crime. They're no longer allowed to show those images yeah. of the suspects. They have to cover them with something. So yeah, imagine like in Carlsbad where Lego land over there are here. That's true. They just <laughs> like it's the epicenter of all the criminals of according to those pictures. So it's interesting. I think it was funny, cool how yeah. they did that. But I can also see uh, Lego saying, "Hey, can you yeah, 100%. Put a yeah. Mickey Mouse head on that. Oh, yeah. but well, you know what Lego should be a nice yeah. phone call. Lego yeah. said, "I tell you what, why don't we develop something for you guys so you don't use that? So yeah. it made a little bit of uh, outreach for them. Kind yeah. of do work with the police." Yeah, and get figure somebody, out a new way. Like a creative, yeah. get their creative department and say, why don't you guys use this instead? Why not? You'd be a terrific diplomat, Mitch. Well, that's what I do. I'm a Libra, so yes. I look at both sides. Well, I'll a new fashion trend has emerged. Men are embracing the crop top. No, no, we're not. Taking no. a page from women's fashion magazines. These guys say no, they're not. One former athlete is showcasing the look on social media with images of him wearing a shirt, oversized t-shirt that exposes his torso. And as you can imagine, this has both fans and critics all fired up. The crop top for men has slowly become more popular in recent years, but now with yeah. more retailers showing interest, it could go mainstream. There was an NFL player that did this, that started this. It was Ezekiel Elliott when he was on the Cowboys. Yes. Started this. Everybody's like, what are you doing? Yeah. It's like, yeah, if you got no. the V going, you no, can do that. No, but. you're not right. No, there, he's not the one. It's uh, the South uh, with people drinking, the guys drinking the beer in the backyard. Oh, yeah. The crop tops just because their belly would It's a natural born crop <laughs> yeah, top. Yeah, like the made. belly would hang yeah. out. Oh, yeah, trust me. The tank top was a little yeah. bit short, yeah. They were wearing, you know, large shirts. It just happened. I, you know, if you, it, here's the thing. If I had that body, yeah, I probably would. You might wear the I, top I would probably. Like, yeah, I'd every, do anything. I'd wander around naked if I had a, every, an excellent every, Adonis body. Every single friend of mine that's been a pro wrestler at some point, they don't own a shirt with sleeves. None <laughs> of them. That's for a reason. I, I could believe that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, of course. Well, they're too big, you know. Hard to get them on there. Uh, let's go now to Vermont, where this uh, Vermont State University set a Harvard course on the music of Taylor Swift, and the music inspired them to actually create a class of their own, all based on the musician Weird Al Yankovic. It's true. Okay. The class, it's titled Weird Al and His Polkas. The school said that while much of its subject matter is based around humor, students also will learn some serious concepts. The school says studying Al's work offers students a way to discuss topics like parody, song craft, and music production. The class will also look at the larger cultural context surrounding Weird Al. The class will also be open to all Vermont State students in the fall, as well as members of the public. And there he is with one of his many, many awards. And I think if people looked at the accomplishments that Weird Al has done, uh, it will blow you away. And, and to the point where most uh, stars were like, hey, I want you to kind of parody my song, and he would turn them away. And uh, the longevity of his career, too. Because I, I remember when mm -hmm. Eat It came out, and I was yeah. like, like one, it was around the, the oh, one yeah. hit wonder days. Yeah. We never hear from him again. And look how he is just, you know, lasted. Wasn't there going to be a movie based on no, his th life? There is. There okay. Is. So okay. Uh, Daniel yeah, Radcliffe, it's, it, it's, it's, okay. it's based on his life. Oh, okay. Like, that if Weird Al wrote it. So it, it's hilarious. It's a funny show. It's on Roku, it, I think. It, it yeah. Was, yeah, it was Roku. one of those. But okay. one of the best concerts I have ever been to. It's a two-hour marathon of him changing costumes and really? videos and running around. It was one of the most amazing, and it was wall to wall. The the uh, auditorium I went and saw it here, oh but it was gosh. one of the best concerts I've ever been to. I would, it would be a fun concert to go to too, because it just seems like yeah. a fun. Yeah, so, I think it, he's underrated. Class. Yeah, I do think he's underrated. I don't think people appreciate him as much as they probably should. Right? Sh yes, and if you get a chance, you should. It's on the Roku okay. channel, which is free. Daniel Radcliffe does a really good yeah. job, as okay. and there's tons of celebrities in this. Oh, really? Tons. One big cameo. It's yeah, the whole you have small okay. cameos, but it's I'm it's actually really funny. Uh, rock legend Billy uh, Joel revealed he has ditched his helicopter for a much more humble mode of transportation. He'll use the Long Island Railroad as a way to get to and from okay. his shows. The 74-year-old Uptown Girl crooner used to fly his chopper to his residency at Madison Square Garden, but he traded the skies for the tracks because of fears over safety. The choice initially concerned his team, who thought his rock star status would cause a commotion on the train. The service celebrated being the chosen transportation method for the piano man. Writing on X, was that Billy Joel on the LIRR? Joel will play his 150th and final show of his residency 
at MSG on July 25th. You guys got a chance to mm -hmm. see him, right? Yeah, over in Tampa, ago. Maddie and I went. And uh, it was just, I mean, a great show. Sting opened up for him. Uh, wow. Yeah, it could be pretentious. I'd taken my helicopter to get there, but it's probably efficient for him to do so. Yes. But it also says, you know, if he's a hometown guy, you know, you're going to take that, the train. A right. lot of people who saw him on the train thought, oh, that's just a guy that looks, looks like, like Billy Joel. you wouldn't think. Yeah, right. Like right? I said when we went to the concert, every guy that went to the bathroom that already looked like right. Billy Joel was <laughs> <so he's laughs> just like, yeah, it's old, bald, white guy. Like, exactly what it he is. He has an everyman look to him. He's awesome. We love Billy yeah. Joel. We also love you, and we yeah. want you to return right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Daily Flash. I'm Andrea Jackson. For KSA Cares, we dedicate time to groups that are making a positive impact on their community. And today we're highlighting a group addressing the teen mental health crisis in a very unique way. But there is one issue that teens are facing that is outside of parents' control, and that is trauma from school shootings. As a parent, how do you help your child face these issues? Joining us to talk about it is Melissa Lynn Lowenstein, Director of Training for Attitudes, Harmony, and achievement, also known as AHA. Melissa, welcome to Daily Flash. Thank you so much, good morning. Let's talk about AHA. What is it and why was it created? Well, AHA is a nonprofit organization that was founded in 1999, right after the Columbine shootings. And two therapists, Jennifer Fried and Randy Friedman, created AHA partially in response to those shootings to create spaces for teens to gather with skilled, compassionate, inspiring adult mentors and peers to learn and create and connect and support and be supported and know themselves better without fear of judgment. Melissa, in AHA, you guys talk a lot about emotional tuning. Why do you feel we need to increase emotional tuning in schools? Well, being able to identify, name, and manage emotions is absolutely essential for everyone's mental health, but especially for teens. And these are the ingredients of emotional intelligence. You've probably heard that term before. And intense emotions are a hallmark of adolescence, which is not a bad thing. It gives teens the courage and the drive to take the risks necessary to, to grow themselves up. But in the teen brain, the centers that make decisions and think things through, and the centers that respond to threats, are not really talking to each other that well yet. And the adolescent years are where this connection develops and the way that teens learn how to navigate emotions during this time really sets them up for the, for the rest of their lives. And Melissa, what do your mental health courses consist of? We gather in groups with a facilitator for every seven or eight teens and we really have an experience together. That's that's the heart of what we do. It's not, we don't sit them down and teach them stuff. We play games, we check in. We we do have little learning segments where they learn, you know, really workable tools for managing their emotions and a lot of other social emotional skills. And, um, and then they sit in circle and they talk about it and they make it relevant to their own lives and they give and receive support from each other and from these really skilled, highly trained facilitators. I think communication is so key. How many kids have you helped so far with this program? Well, we have served an amazing, about 75,000 people wow. in the course of 25 years. Goodness. And most of them have been teens. We also serve educators and parents, um, but, primarily, you know, 54,000 or so students over the course of the time that AHA has has been a thing. And, and what's next for the group? Well, we have two signature events coming up. Uh, we have our Sing It Out event, which is a unique 15-week journey for a group of teens that they go from never having stood on stage with a microphone to rocking out a cover song in front of a band and hundreds of screaming fans. And then we have our summer digital cleanse where we bring some kids out to nature and take their devices away for five days and do our AHA thing. Melissa, great to have you on the show. For more information on AHA, check out ahasb.org, I should say, ahasb.org. Mitch, we'll send it over to you. Doing such great things there. It's so, so needed. All right, moving on now. Monica Lewinsky, remember her? 
She's actually still rocking everything from a bold leather trench to her signature little black dress as she stars in a fashion campaign. No blue dress. I didn't see any blue <laughs> no, dress. No, no. She's also dress. using the ad space to get women to use their voice as at the polls. The 50-year-old, wow, a former White House employee looks stunning. She does, too. And the Reformation brands new images. The political activist, writer, and producer who worked under Bill Clinton. <laughs> literally, uh, in the 1990s, uh, came under fire uh, for her affair with the former president, certainly knows a thing about uh, how to use her voice. She co-produced the HBO Max documentary, 15 Minutes of Shane, exploring how to cancel culture and online shaming have impacted people like herself and like what I just did. Lewinsky also <laughs> serves as a producer on the FX series Impeachment, The American Crime Story, which documented her relationship with President Clinton and his resulting impeachment. And I say, she looks, uh, first off, uh, 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 amazing, number one. And to be able to recover from what she has done to where she is at now, I think all props, and because I think back then people, you probably agree with me, Jackson. Back then, people were like, well, this is it for her. She's never going to be heard of ever again, but she's using it for good. Yeah, and if you watch that FX show, it is phenomenal. It is, I mean, right. the story that is told, that unfolds in that. And you think about uh, the politics now when it comes to women in that kind of situation, yeah. which she was in with the president at that time, compared to women in this day and age, I feel like she was kind of the first one out of the gate that really yeah. took it, uh, took it tough with regard to criticism you know, coming right after her when she really was the victim in all of this. And, and, and a forgotten victim as well. Yes. I mean, and she came and, and she first was labeled as the one that did this and, and almost like uh, he got a pass almost uh, for, for what happened. But I'm, I'm glad to see that she's actually still rocking and rolling, still has a great sense of humor on uh, social media. She puts out some really, actually some funny stuff, but great to see here what she's doing there as well. And uh, so we wish her all the great. Yeah. And even with my bad jokes. Okay, <laughs> I get, I know it's wrong. Hey, we <laughs> want okay. you to be informed of <laughs> Of course, what's going on here on the show? Maybe you've seen something on the show and you're like, hey, I need more info. Don't worry about it. We got a place for you to check out. It's dailyflashshow.com. There you'll not only find links, you'll find full interviews. And matter of fact, you can watch the entire show there. So if somebody says, we're going to watch this awesome show, you say, well, go to dailyflashshow.com. We love hearing from you as well. You could drop us an email. And of course, anything we say here, want to talk about my bad jokes or whatever, or whoever's, you can drop us an email <laughs> at flash at dailyflashshow.com. More fun coming around the corner. Also going to be talking about kill switches, put it in new vehicles. Good idea or bad, Car Smarts is next. Hey, welcome back to Daily Flash. It's time for Car Smarts. And in today's Car Smarts, Lauren Fix, the car coach, actually talks about a new kill switch that might be in your new vehicle. But is it a good thing? She get, tells us all about it. The National Highway Traffic and Safety Administration, or NHTSA, wants your feedback on the kill switch mandate. This has already been passed in the 2021 Infrastructure Bill. The system is described in the bill as an advanced drunk and impaired driving prevention technology, and the measure is positioned as a safety tool to help prevent drunk driving. Nobody wants drunk driving. But there is more to this bill than just the drunk driving part. And by 2026, the kill switch will be mandated in every single new car and truck sold in the United States. Really, I'm not kidding you. And if you read carefully, you'll start seeing this for yourself. And that's why in the past, your comments were so aggressive. I wanted to make sure you had a chance to comment. NHTSA is seeking feedback from the public on this issue, and that's your chance to say something. According to the Washington Post, the agency is curious to learn if the public will accept the potential of false positives that could prevent sober drivers from operating a vehicle. Just imagine any emergency, and that's where you were getting really upset in the comments, and this is your chance to give you the feedback. But you can't do anything because your car won't start due to a false positive or any other situation for that matter. I can just imagine you calling your boss saying, oh, I can't get my vehicle started. Uh, it's some sort of preventative technology. It's giving me some sort of false positive. There's gonna be a million different variables out there. Where it really gets concerning is if you do have an urgent emergency with a life-threatening implications, you won't be able to get your vehicle there. It's gonna sense your stress and shut the vehicle down. And how do you get out of kill switch jail anyhow? That was something that one of you commented on your right. So the vehicle's locked down. How do you unlock it? That has never been discussed either. Now, even if the system is 99.9% .9 accurate, this could still amount to a million false positives a day, which is something all of us will have to deal with in the system if it's implemented, unless 
you say something and we try to get this removed. The National Highway Traffic and Safety Administration also wants to know how the government should educate the public about the technology-related privacy concerns. The concerns include listening to you in your car, tracking your eyes, and they're already doing that through a company called Gentech Systems and many others. And if you look at the video, it is going to really upset you how they're tracking literally every action that you make. And this includes tracking of your driving inputs, including steering, location, gas, and brake pedals. And more sensors means more data collection posing further privacy concerns, not just for you, but literally for everyone. I'm Lauren Fix, and you can find this information on my website, carcoachreports.com and dailyflashshow.com. Hey everyone, it's Furry Friends time, and you dog lovers out there have a routine of walking your dog on a daily walk, right? Well, morning, night, if you work from home, maybe during your lunch break to get some fresh air and you know get off that Zoom meeting. But those of you who don't take them out and just take them out back to go piddle and come right back in, well, it might be a detriment to them. Experts say the typical yard doesn't offer enough stimulation to prompt an, an adequate amount of movement for your furry friend. They say, first off, all dogs don't exercise by themselves. They need to be motivated and prompted to move. Also, they rely on the schedule for their well-being and they rely on the companionship of their humans. That's you. As well as the interaction with the other dogs and animals they come in contact with, like that squirrel they're trying to chase or that raccoon they're trying to make best friends with and make it into a Disney movie. Now, walking them, not walking them can add stress and make them more destructive in the house. So when they tear up your shoes, it's your fault. So dog people, walk your dogs. And Walt Disney World's Animal Kingdom marked an exciting milestone when the baby elephant Cora made her public debut on the savannah inside the park's Kilimanjaro Safari ride. She was born on December 13th, but was uh, was stuck to her living quarters until she was big enough to meet the guest. She is bound to her, her uh, mother, Nadia, who is an eight-year-old and was born on the Florida property also. You can go see the pair graze on the ride. And I've been on that ride, I don't know how many times. It's great to go out there and see the animals. Sometimes they come right up to the safari truck and you get a little interaction. We had a chance to get a rhino a little too close once and uh, we had to wait there for half an hour for the big boy to move. So if you get a chance, head out to Dizzy's Animal Kingdom and you can see the new baby Cora. Now Mitch, you and I are cat people and we don't have to worry about the walk thing, but you had, uh, you've had you had dogs in the past and was that part of the routine or were you a yard do uh, dog dad? Well, okay, so well, I had kids, that, so they're like, hey, get out and walk them, right? You know, but they, they never did. And when I moved out of this one house, we were renting, and they had to replace the uh, the, the front room f uh, flooring because, well, you know, th if they don't go out, first off, they'll, they'll they'll find their own place. But what what I had learned is they get anxious, and then as you mentioned, I love that you say they tear into your shoes is the fact that they bored, they're very bored, and they just wanna actually have some kind of stimulation. Cats, not so much, because they'll play with just about anything, but dogs have got to have that space, it seems like. And those of you that rely on the puppy pads, they say those aren't good, because the smells are very toxic. Obviously, when you're training them, it's fine, but when unless they're older and they you know can't control themselves anymore, don't use that as a backup. Like It almost trains you to not use them, you so you have to take them out. All right, and here on Daily Flash, they teach this old dog new tricks all the time so it can happen. We got more Flash and more great stuff right around the corner. Stick around. This is Daily Flash with your hosts, Andrea Jackson and Mitch English. Trending news and entertainment. This is Daily Flash. Hey everybody, I'm Andrea Jackson. I'm Mitch English, welcoming you to Daily Flash. We hope that uh, you're having a fantastic Tuesday, no matter where you are and what you're doing. Get ready, it is coming, uh, especially to the southeast. It is called Cicada Geddon. Now, um, cicada. cicada, the cicadas come out. Now, uh, they're, the, they're the, you know, at night when you walk in the air, you hear those, uh -huh. Uh -huh. you know, there's cicadas, right? And um, not to be confused with John Cicada, which is a singer. <laughs> Whole different story. And he won't be coming out for another no. 20 years either. <laughs> but anyway, they're saying that this now next round, brood 21 of the species of cicadas are the actually trillions are going to be coming out. And so much so, these are like bionic uh, cicadas oh, come on. to where they have, they can pee everywhere. No. Like they have, they have yeah. magic butts that pee and they spread STD among them. 
they can spread it around. And this is going to be the biggest infestation of uh, cicadas since 1803. Okay, now where is this happening? It's mainly in the southeast. It's already kicking okay. off like in um, uh, Atlanta is expected. Okay. In the springtime is generally when it come out. Temperatures have to be around 64 degrees mm -hmm. for them to actually start to come out. And you'll see them. When you and I, uh, when we were doing the show up in I Dayton, was, mm -hmm. I'm serious. We, we were in Dayton, Ohio. We walked up. We didn't know. I'd never seen them before. It had been you? 17 years. It's a 17-year cycle, yes. which we were told. Never seen a cicada. I never heard. Never seen, heard of. <laughs> yeah, I, I was in Cincinnati one day, and I kid you not, they look like they're the size of hummingbirds, and I, they were coming the ground, toward my car. Oh, like it was moving. moving. The ground looked. I mean, it was that. Many, I mean, I'm telling you, millions of, and they're just yeah. yeah. And it was like it was the weirdest to, see, uh, to be able to see. They that. they come up from the ground to mate and die. That's, That's it. That's it. That's all they do. Not a bad gig. You're asking, no, it isn't. And you're asking, well, what are they good for? Really nothing, much like war, but caterpillars eat them. Thank you, so Frankie. it's good for them. You're yes. absolutely welcome. Mm -hmm. And um, they say it, it, it will destroy fruit crops, but it can be contained because uh, the skaters, as you said, they're eventually going to die mm -hmm. off. But they're coming, so get ready mm -hmm. for it in spring. Mainly into southeast is actually going to get the bulk of it. Oh, stuff. goodness gracious. Well, the California Police Department said it will have to come up with a new way to disguise the faces of suspects in photos. Under a new California law, authorities can no longer show a picture of a suspect involved in a nonviolent crime. <laughs> so the Marietta Police Department was using different ways to cover the faces of suspects in mugshots. In recent weeks, they used images of Lego heads to block out faces of the suspects in their social media posts. But Lego responded and asked them to stop using their trademarked characters. That's too bad. Imagine. No, she got arrested for it. Uh, yeah, hey, uh, I think it was creative. I think it was fun. Uh, and But you can understand where Lego would not want that of sort course. of thing. But it also kind of puts, you know, the blockhead to the... Um, you know, the realm of, of people in you know, a product placement, I guess mm -hmm. you could say, or like you're constantly seeing those sort of things. So I, I, what we'll probably go back to seeing is the digitized faces, which I don't like. They're not as fun. But if you're smart and you're a new company and you've got a new logo, it might not be a bad idea for you to get your name out there. So we are now offering the city of Moretta, uh, <laughs> actually the Daily Flash logo. If yeah. you'd like to use the Daily Flash logo to put on any of these suspects, we are giving it, right? I or, think so. Uh, well, uh, no charge. Uh, no charge you, at all. Use Mitch face. We'll leave Andrea. What? They can use ours. Thank you. You can yeah. use my uh, cartoon yep. face that you I use have the cartoon for my face. logo. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, well I'll Just be, promote the website it. and That's watch the show. Do. That's, That's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. I love it. All right, there's a new fashion trend that uh, some men are embracing. It's the crop top that's taken a page of <laughs> women's fashion magazines. One former athlete showcasing look on social media with images of him wearing a short, oversized T-shirt, of course, exposing his torso. You can imagine this has not only fans, but critics all fired up. Crop top for men has slowly become more popular in more uh, recent years, but now more well, retailers are actually showing interest, so it could go mainstream. Um, are they comfortable? I, I, I've i never met. Oh, you boy, gonna wear here you yours? go. Nobody well, wants this. Nobody well, nobody wants this. Well, model it off for us. <laughs> oh, you need a tan. He's bro. got the dad bod. You're the in. whitest guy in thank Florida. You, thank Look you. At Appreciate that, it. Man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, very nice. Very nice. Have you Matt. seen those? Um, uh, uh, what are they, fanny packs that look just like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. yeah, those are hilarious. No. They're, they're fanny packs. They and look it looks like, like you're wearing a crop top. Yeah. Uh -uh. I'll get away with it on my honeymoon. We're going to Europe. Do so. it. <laughs> yeah, you'll be well, fine. Like you wear a Speedo. Oh, oh, that's happening. Oh, that's a Don't great idea. Don't tell Leah, idea. but it's happening. Okay. It's happening. Okay. I, it, it, didn't, he, it doesn't happen unless we get pictures. He was showing off more than just his torso. In that <laughs> I think he was. He's going to say that right there. We're back right after this. Welcome back to your Daily Flash. In celebration of Earth Month, we are calling on a father-son duo who actually released a brand new book. It's beautiful. It's called Where Do Ocean Creatures Sleep at Night? Please welcome one half of the duo, Cliff Simmons, to Daily hey. Flash. Hey, Cliff. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm uh, I'm sorry that my, my dad couldn't make it, so I'm representing both of us here. Okay, well, is he sleeping? Because I want to know where he sleeps at <laughs> night, too. Okay, for that. But that's the name of the book, of course, is Where Do Ocean Creatures Sleep at Night? What inspired yeah. y'all? And this is actually uh, one of three. It's like your third in the series about ocean creatures? It's our third in the series. That's right. My, my father uh, has written many children's books. So even when I was growing up, you know, in the 90s, he wrote a number of different children's books. It was always an inspiration to me. Uh, and when he and I came up with the idea for this series, I was excited to partner up with him. So that's really the inspiration, I would say, along with all of my nieces and nephews, watching them grow up and seeing their excitement uh, for these books that we've been able to write together um, are kind of the two key things. 
The illustrations, Cliff, are beautiful the in colors, here, man. and the colors are just spectacular. Really How do you choose which creatures to feature? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> that part was a process. You know, it, we actually had to narrow down from a much larger uh, initial list um, with a lot, a lot of different options. I think ultimately we, we wanted to go with ones that we knew would be exciting um, and that and that folks really like already, but also um, ones where we had interesting facts about how they sleep, um, and we were able to show those. Um, and in the book and, and inspire, um, you know, kids of all, of all ages. So uh, that's a bit about the process. And if you think about, you know, there's more ocean space and there's land space. And so we don't even, there's parts of the ocean we know nothing about. So how can we actually uh, introduce maybe a younger generation to ocean conservation? It's a good point. I mean, it's something that we certainly thought about when, when writing this and when we chose to have this, you know, this latest book be be focused on the ocean. So I think it's a key piece. Um, and we've thought about in future books, we want to have more of a focal point on on conservation. So um, yeah, I, I appreciate the point. And, and some of the, the creatures that we chose were specifically chosen with that in mind. And Cliff, at the end of the book, you mentioned the importance yeah. of sleep for children. Why was this an important note oh, yeah. to add in the book? Yeah, we wanted to have that be an educational um, component of this, right? I mean, throughout the whole series, you'll see that common theme is that not only do we go into these interesting facts about all the different animals and their sleeping habits, but then each book culminates with that with that key message about why sleep is so important, especially um, for kids of, of that young age that are developing. So um, we hope that that message hits home um, to, to both parents and kids. You know, what's great about this, you know, we're trying to uh, introduce new generations about uh, ocean conservation as well. And so we talk about generations. You actually got to work with your dad, second generation author and that sort of thing. Tell us, uh, kind of walk us through, uh, you know, what was that experience like for, for uh, you doing that? Yeah, I think it's a unique thing, right? The opportunity to work work with my father on something that we both care so much about. So, you know, he, he and I both have, have full-time, you know, roles and, and jobs outside of this. So, First of all, we had to make sure to um, to carve out the necessary time to collaborate together, um, to to learn one another's working styles, and then really just me being inspired by him through you know throughout the whole process, given his his tenure as a children's book author. So him sort of being my mentor throughout this process and learning from him um, has been been an exciting part of the process. And I know you guys really stress the importance of reading to your children in this day and age of people so consumed with electronic devices. Why is it so important to actually grab a book and sit down and take the time to read out loud? Yeah, yeah, I, I think it's critical. Um, I really do. I mean, as technology becomes more and more ubiquitous, especially to kids of a very young age, um, I can't overstate enough how important I think it is um, to continue reading to your kids, you know, not on an iPad, not on the phone. But on, uh, but but with real, real books. So, yeah, I've got lots of nieces and nephews, and I've I've been able to watch the way that my older siblings, you know, kind of put they, rules in place on technology. It's, so. it's it, Cliff. It's one of those things that they will remember forever, and we want folks, of course, to remember this as well. You can head and check out the book, SteveSimmonsBooks.com. It's available on Amazon. We'll also have the link on our website. Thank you, Cliff. Hey, welcome back to Daily Flash from the Las Vegas at the annual International Builder Show. Renowned storm chaser Josh Morgan showcases some of the benefits of building climate resilient homes. Josh, first off, tell us some of the trends of building these climate resilient homes. What's out there? Well, I think the big trend is that everyone is thinking about this now, which is a really good thing. And I was saying whether climate is changing or not, I've always said North America is a very, very tough room for homes. You know, just, but I mean, we get the most wild weather in North America, you know, between extreme heat, extreme cold, tornadoes, hurricanes, you name it. And so I think building a home that is client resilient, that's really what it's all about. And I think more and more builders are really looking at that. They're not just looking at the aesthetics of the house, right. but how long is it going to last? Really, where's the best place to start when it comes to making these types of homes? Well, I think, you know, if you have an existing home, I think one of the very first things you can do is new siding. I mean, that's the number one thing. A lot of people have homes that are um, sided with vinyl or, you know, uh, other kinds of things. But James Hardy siding, which is what I did my house with. It's fiber cement. It is impervious to every kind of abuse that a house can experience, whether it's a, a impact from flying debris and wind wow. or moisture or rotting or termites or anything else or even fire. 
doesn't burn. Hey, let's talk about, talk about that partnership James Hardy has with Habitat Humanity about building climate resilient habitat homes. Tell us about that. Yeah, well, Habitat for Humanity has Habitat Strong, which is building homes that are not just affordable, but also climate resilient. And uh, James Hardy is all about climate resilience because of this, the strength of the siding. It's a perfect match. And uh, it's a partnership that makes a lot of sense. We're very excited about it. And if folks ever there have never gotten involved with Habitat Humanity, go out and do it. It's something really cool. And it's great to see that these homes are going to be built to last, too. Josh, thanks so much for joining us. We're going to make sure we post this information on our own website. And you can find that, of course, at dailyflashshow.com. This spring, forget sacrificing quality for savings. Because we've got the inside scoop on how to shop the best beauty buys of the season, you know, without blowing your budget. Here to tell us about it is beauty expert Millie Almodovar. Hey, Millie. Hi, thanks for having me. Well, the start of a new season is the perfect time to revamp your beauty routine and replenish your favorites. CVS Pharmacy, one of the largest and most trusted beauty retailers in the country, is kicking off spring with their semi-annual Epic Beauty Sale now through April 27th to help you save big. Now, Bubble is a brand that I have been seeing absolutely everywhere. And I have to say, I absolutely love their Slam Dunk Hydrating Face Moisturizer. It's so soothing, ultra hydrating, and just leaves my skin feeling so soft. Now, if you love the look of a fuller lip, the Maybelline Lifter Plump Gloss is a game changer for instantly plumped lips that last. Also, the Zit Sticker Killer Acne Extra Strength Patches are my favorite acne patch on the market. They're five times stronger and faster acting than any other product like it. Now for hair care, I love Myel's Rosemary Mint Light Scalp and Hair Strengthening Oil. It has rosemary, mint, biotin. It smells so amazing, and it just leaves your hair feeling so soft and luxurious. And finally, we all know how important it is to wear SPF every single day. And my current favorite is the Sunbums Daily SPF 50 Face Lotion. It's ultra lightweight, and it absorbs quickly into skin, making it a perfect option to use under makeup. Now, here's how the sale works. From now through April 27th, you're going to shop with your extra care card and you can earn more than $100 extra bucks every week. If you don't have an extra care card, don't worry about it. You can get one for free. Just go to cvs.com slash extra care or sign up in store and be sure to check out cvs.com slash epic beauty. Come in store or browse your CVS Pharmacy app to see for yourself before April 27th. CVS even has a convenient buy online, pick up in store option to make your shopping experience easier and stress free. Reports have shown the clean power industry is bringing jobs, economic investment, and clean energy to states across the country. And joining us to discuss how clean energy projects benefit local communities and the careers of people living in these communities is the CEO of the American Clean Power Association, Jason Grimay. Clean energy is the fastest growing part of the American energy economy. Last year, over 75% of all of the new electricity added to the grid was coming from clean sources like wind and solar and the battery facilities that store that energy. The economic benefits nationally and locally are huge. Over $500 billion of private sector investment has come into this clean energy sector in just the last two years. There are over 500,000 people working already in clean energy companies, and that's going to double over the next decade. When it comes to the local economy, we're talking about investments of billions of dollars in community tax bases, bringing jobs to all 50 states. And we can't forget tremendous benefits to national security. This is homegrown American energy. The fuel is free. And finally, we get the benefits of clean air and a healthy environment. We are proud to be part of this clean energy future. For more information, please go to fuelforthought.energy. LG has just announced its donation of $100,000 to the National Alliance on Mental Illness, known as NAMI, at the NCAA Final Four Basketball Championship weekend. The donation marks LG's continued commitment to advocating for assistance systems and nurturing and encouraging conversations about mental health challenges among college athletes. LG is excited to use the power of our NCAA partnership to support student athletes in all aspects of their lives. We're doing so in a variety of ways, such as elevating awareness of the importance of their mental health. 
LG's Transparent Conversations podcast series aims to do this by helping foster conversations around the overall wellness of student athletes, both physical and mental. The third season of Transparent Conversations is debuting here at the Final Four with the recordings of two new episodes. I hope that there's, uh, you know, growth uh, and and that some positivity comes out of this and, and sparking uh, ideas and discussion about just the struggles that student athletes go through and uh, the pressure and stress that they're under. These LG Transparent Conversations are just so critically important. I feel that way always once I leave them because it is so clear that the athletes that we have participate feel so heard and seen. What drives me, I wanna see my young men that I coach go on and, and have families and, and be productive people in society and, and have great opportunities to maybe play professionally. We are honored to announce today our collaboration with the NCAA to launch LG's inaugural Life's Good Coaches Award. This program will celebrate coaches that create a nurturing and a positive environment for their student athletes. Well, the Life's Good Coaches Award is, is a great way to uh, support student athletes. And I've been on both sides of that, so I understand the importance of, of mental health, and uh, so it's a really important issue. And LG is a leader. They're setting the tone, and they're executing, and they're demonstrating it by having us as a partner and making this wonderful donation of $100,000 to help us do our work. Well, being in center court, where the Final Four is going to be played for the men, and having a check presentation on behalf of mental health support, it doesn't get better than that. Welcome back to Daily Flash. A French girl has fallen in love with a teacher in Brooklyn, and he's fallen even harder. But their future is thrown into limbo when she interviews for a position in her hometown of Quebec. This is today's must-watch movie, French Girl. I want to talk to you about Sophie. She's the one. Check out this bling. What? Marrying Sophie to get Canadian citizenship. It's brilliant. No, Dad. I've been asked to interview for the executive chef position at the Chateau Frontenac in Quebec City. Quebec City, Canada? Yeah. Well, further north. Look at this place. 400 years of history. They're from New York, you're a Rangers fan? Oh, I actually don't follow hockey. <coughs> I love figure skating. Figure skating? The costumes, dazzling. So you're the famous Ruby Collins. And you must be Gordon. I've never got your family name. What the f Yeah, she told me she'd been with women before, but this is her ex. Good work. She lied to you. She didn't lie. She was protecting my feelings. Pop the question before she switches teams again. <laughs> oh, my day was great. I tutored your brother. Je connais un gars pour mille pièces. Il peut um, smash her legs. Oh, like Daniel Harding. I slaughtered a little baby lamb with your father. Oh, wow. Oh, and I also found out that you and Ruby used to be lovers. I brought you here because of your talent, not because of our history. I have the night off. Are you serious? Living in the city with my family really would be amazing. It feels like I can't do anything right, unlike Ruby, who can do absolutely no wrong. When a woman like that sets her sights on something, she always gets what she wants. Want to shoot him blanks, Gordo? I got a fish! I love your daughter, and I'm not giving up that easy. I am the best at car chases! At this point, you probably all think I killed Mammy. I didn't come in. I didn't come in. What's happening? I know, I'm just, it's so beautiful. I'm liking that. Uh, good to see yeah. Zach Braff around again. That's I cool. love him, yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah. Weird to see him with more little gray, though. It's kind of I weird. know, he's it's getting a little bit older. Well, that does it for our <laughs> show today. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes, for more information on any of today's stories, be sure to visit our website, dailyflashshow.com. You'll find everything there. You'll also find Mitch and myself yeah. there as well. Bye-bye, y'all. <laughs>